Just so happens, I needed to catch up on making my long form videos, and today July 30th, 2023, I decided to do a Roop Stable Diffusion tutorial. I already had things sort of planned out. Well, not really. But I did know that when I was going to do a Roop tutorial, I was going to use Arnold Schwarzenegger for the face swap. Because after all, he is the Terminator. Hasta la vista, baby. With that being said, just so coincidentally, it's his birthday today. So here's to you Arnie. I will be placing your face on different bodies today. In my previous video, I covered Swap Face vs. Roop. I was covering Roop as a standalone program and not a stable diffusion extension. So today, I will show you how to install Roop on Automatic 11.11. First, we'll need to head over to the GitHub page. Link is in the description. From here, scroll down and you'll see a Visual Studio hyperlink. Click that. Under Community, click Free Download. Download Visual Studio Setup.exe and install it. Click Yes under the User Account Control Settings dialog. Click Continue to accept the privacy and terms. Now, there will be a lot of workloads by default checked. We only need three. So uncheck everything except four. Python Development. Desktop development with C++ and Visual Studio extension development. So, make sure everything is unchecked and only these three are checked and selected. Now you can select install while downloading or download all then install. It's up to you. It's recommended to restart your PC after installing Visual Studio workloads to avoid any errors that may pop up due to caching problems. It can be a hit or miss if you don't restart after the install. Next, we need to go back to the GitHub site. Scroll down, below the Visual Studio hyperlink, you'll see this command line, pip install insight face 0.7.3. Copy that line and open CMD by pressing Windows key plus R and typing CMD or click on the search box on your taskbar and typing CMD, then clicking on the command prompt program. Now, you should have the line copied in your clipboard, so in the command line, simply right click to paste the line and hit enter. Let it install. If you end up with errors, in the command window, you may need to install the old version of pip so to do this, type python-mpip install-upgrade pip equals equals 22.2.1. Now, we need to launch Stable Diffusion and go to the Extensions tab and use this URL in the Install from URL tab. When that's done, click on the Install tab and click Check for Updates. After you've checked for the latest updates, click Apply and Restart. Now, Roop for Automatic 11.11 should be installed. You'll see a Roop tab here. If you don't see this Roop tab, then that means the installation was not successful. So make sure you've installed Visual Studio correctly and restart. However, if you do see the Roop tab, then that means you're good to go. Let's go over the settings. When you click on the Roop tab, it will expand. Here you'll see the drop image here or click to upload box. Under that we have a small checkbox for enable. When you want to use Roop, Make sure you have a face in the image section and you check this enable box. Next we have comma separated face numbers. In the context of Roop, comma separated face numbers is the indexing system it uses for every face it detects in a given image. The first face it detects is assigned the number zero, the next face gets one, then two, and so on. This numbering scheme is used regardless of the number of faces in the image. You see, in computer programming, we often start counting from zero. So, in an image with two faces, the faces would be numbered as 0 and 1, instead of 1 and 2. If there are three faces, they'd be numbered 0, 1, and 2. What this means is when you want to apply any operation to a specific face, you use its unique number. Want to apply an effect to the first face it detected? You'd use the number 0. For the second face, use 1. If you're working with an image that has three faces and you want to apply operations to all faces, you'd set it to 0, 1, 2. This tells Roop to perform the operation on the faces with those numbers. Remember, this numbering is from left to right. The leftmost face is 0, the next is 1, and it continues in this pattern. Therefore, to select multiple faces, you simply use comma-separated face numbers. For example, 0, 1 to select the first two faces in the image. And that's the nitty-gritty of comma-separated face numbers. Next up, we have Restore Faces. By default it is set to Code Former. For me Code Former works fine. However, test the different settings to find what works best for you. To the right, we have a Restore Visibility slider. The Restore Visibility option. It adjusts the intensity of Restore Faces. Lower values tone down the restoration, while higher values amplify it. It's all about finding the right balance between your transformations and the original image. 
experiment with these to discover your ideal settings. Below that we have upscaler, you can select the different upscalers to also enhance and improve quality. Coming up next is the upscaler scale. This one's all about size. That's what she said. <laughs> it determines the factor by which your original image's size should be multiplied before creating the new image at the specified resolution. Essentially, it's your control knob for how big you want the fresh image to be in relation to the original one. Remember, the larger the upscale factor, the larger your output image. So, go ahead and adjust this to match your needs. Let's now turn to upscaler visibility. This tool controls the impact of the upscaler on your image. It's like a volume knob, but instead of controlling sound, it controls the degree to which the upscaling is applied. Now, let's touch on model. This refers to the location of the ONNX, Open Neural Network Exchange, file, which is essentially the deep learning model that Roop uses to work its magic. This model, in layman's terms, is like the brain behind the operation. It's what allows the application to understand and perform the face swap tasks on your images, like facial recognition and modification. There we go. So let's see Roop in action. I'll start with something like Portrait of a Cyborg, Bokeh Background. I'm using the new SDXL 1.0 model, so let me change the resolution to 1024 by 1024. Now, under Roop, I'll drag and drop my image of Arnold, because that's the face I want the cyborg to have. Just do it. I'll leave everything default. Let's see what we get. Whoops! Forgot to hit enable. Let's try again. I love it. Um, yeah. Sorta looks like Arnie. However, I want more control, so to do this, I'll need to use Control Net. However, the new SDXL 1.0 model isn't currently supported by Control Net at the moment, so I'll fire up Epic Realism model and enable Control Net. I'll use this image of Arnold and enable control net. I'll use open pose, leaving everything default. Let's see what we get. In case you're wondering, as stable diffusion is creating the image, you may notice that it doesn't look like Arnold. That is because stable diffusion will first generate the image from the prompt, then use root to replace the face. All right. That definitely looks like Arnold. I'll be back. Now, let's say you already have an image and all you'd like to do is swap out the face. We can use image to image for that. So let's head over to image to image and fire up a portrait of a cyborg, bokeh background that I pre-made earlier. I'll simply add in the picture to image to image, set my dimensions, enable root, add Arnold's face to root, click enable and fire it up. Oh, before we do that, because we are an image to image, we need to decrease the denoise settings as well. I'll set this to 0 0.4. Cool. Good morning. Now, what if you had an image with two faces and you wanted to switch out both faces, one face with Arnold and the other face with Sylvester Stallone? Here is what you do. Go to your folder where your stable diffusion is installed and head over to the extensions tab. Look for the SD Web UI root folder and make a copy of it. Restart stable diffusion and now you'll see two root tabs. Let's go to the image to image tab, load up our image with the two faces. Enable the first group drop in Arnold's face. Under comma separated face numbers. Leave it at zero. Now enable the second group and drop in Sylvester Stallone's face. Under comma separated face numbers. Set it to one. Remember, going from left to right is how this works. So the face on the left is zero which will be replaced with Arnold and the face on the right is one and will be replaced with Sylvester. Oh, I nearly let this slip by, remember, we're doing image to image here, so don't leave your dimensions and denoising strengths hanging. Get them set. Now, why am I pointing out these tiny oversights? Well, we all get caught up in the rush sometimes, right? It's easy to zip through these steps, make a little misstep, then scratch our heads when things don't go as planned. Keep an eye out, stay sharp, and let's keep rolling. Aw, oh, a match made in heaven. Sorry to do you like that Arnie, especially on your birthday. Well by the time this video is released it will be your belated birthday so, I think I'm good. Don't you? 
So anyways, that was the Roop extension for Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111. I hope you gained some value from the video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and watch my other videos where I share other valuable information that you may not know about. If you're interested. My other video I covered swap face versus root, so be sure to check that out. Hope to see you in the next video. Learn more about AI with AIcontroversy.com.